Okay, so we arrived um, here at Bangor, at Bally Home, uh, yesterday. Uh, had an easy run really the last few days, very favourable winds, and uh, got here quicker than expected. And then, so all of a sudden, um, it's kind of time to tie up the loose ends, and that, that means, unfortunately, selling the boat. Um, so we've been um, touting for business, so we're selling, and we think we've got a buyer who's coming along later to sail, sail the boat away. So this is last chance to uh, give a bit of a, a detail about the uh, modifications we made to make this an expedition boat. Uh, so the main thing is one of the big key things is being able to carry gear. So we did that by these barrels and definitely experience has told, told me that uh, barrels are much better than dry bags for this sort of thing. They sh shed water very quickly and are fully dry. So we've got three barrels, one for food, one for me, one for Helena, and a slightly bigger barrel, which is a last minute um, switch when I realised the tent didn't fit in the smaller barrels. So in here, in this one, we've got the tent and sleeping bags and sleeping mats, and we've been like 50 nights now in, in the tent and sleeping very well like that, really. Okay, so there, uh, these are tied on. Yeah, I made a few extra holes in the, in the gunnel here to make some anchor points. Um, okay, it's not easy to see. And then I'll put this extra, this bit of windsurf mast here, just tied on at the, at, at the, on the mast base end and hooked under the bar at the front. That uh, makes this solid bar, which means the, the strap can go under there, and you can get both both barrels nice and tightly secured with a single strap. And there's a similar system at the back. Um, just being a bit inventive to make a anchor point and then a single strap to weight them down. Okay, and then also to to keep the barrels nicely nicely in place. Uh, just a few foam blocks just stuck on with contact adhesive, so if, um, if you want to turn the boat back into a non-expedition boat, that should be fairly pain-free to get rid of. Um, and then extra storage. Uh, the boat comes as standard with these flower pots, um, but they're not super useful because they're a bit small. Um, so what I did on one side was... Um, um, again, you will get a big lump of foam and shape it into a kind of volcano. And then you've got a generously sized um, storage flower pot thing. Enough of the coffee and in fact I took my laptop as well and we have lots of stuff in there. And it's also drier being a bit lifted up off the deck. Um, okay, also front here. Uh, using every inch of space really we've got a kind of overkill size anchor um, which we didn't very often anchor in you know like a, in a traditional sense but we did use it sometimes for um, jamming into a shingle or sand or dunes or something and then hauling the boat up on the anchor line to pull it up a steep bit of beach and get it out out of the way of the high tide mark so that was the kind of main use of the anchor and then when we hauled the boat up uh, we'd be doing it on on rollers um, which we always deflated when at sea but you can pick up these cheap pumps for about five pounds on amazon and then you can pump up the pump up the rollers in you know, a minute and a half or something um, and the rollers themselves they're they felt too flimsy, we thought they wouldn't last, but in fact they did, we got, yeah, they're about that long. They look like they're going to fall apart, but you can actually get around to them using them pretty much every day. And we did get a couple of punches, in fact you can take the valve, valve off and then you can bring the puncture hole up to the inside and then repair on the inside just with, just with some duct tape. So we successfully repaired a few holes like that. 
and yeah I mean the only thing is where you, where you have to be a bit selective where you choose to fill the boat up and sometimes clear a path to get rid of all the sharp stones and shells and sticks and things like that but they last better than much better than than we were fearing okay um, okay so those were the you know two of the Two of the challenges that I had to be overcome were carrying gear and being able to get the boat up the beach. And the third kind of key, well, very nice thing to overcome was what to do if the wind completely deserts you and you, you're kind of stuck out at sea and you can't get back to land. And that's where some oars come in handy. So, yeah, so I um, cut off an old windsurf boom and a kayak paddle and made some um, some oars which are kind of like full carbon so they're quite nice really um, and they just put on some, put on some hooks on the boom and are very light and don't get in the way at all really they, they were not a problem at all there and um, and then the Rolex system because you didn't really know where the Rolex would need to go it's quite handy to have an adjustable system at the beginning. Um, so these are these are um, like crab pot hooks, and these are just nylon rings that you can buy for next to nothing from the fishing pots. And um, hooks on there, and using the same cleats as as the down as the uh, uh, downhaul and some other string users. Um, that holds them tight on the side. And, uh, and there you go with your rollers. And they also work pretty well. And um, normally we keep the sail up when, when we were when we were rowing and just a just an elastic. On this, um, onto the shroud, keeps that out of the way and stops, means you don't bang your head on it all the time. Um, so that was pretty much our setup for um, the rowing. And then one other thing we did, so we didn't, so we could steer a bit more easily or adjust if there was a little bit of wind maybe, um, was just having an elastic hanging off the, the rudder the tiller um, and then you could just put your foot in that and then steer as you were running and um, yeah obviously there's a rollick this side as well um, that's it there's all that so, um, there's a few other things everything was tied on of course yeah we've got a water thing there um, so uh, yeah a few extra straps Plastic straps, sort of general purpose. Again, you can get these for, for a few quid on Amazon. You can buy like a dozen of these. Um, these plastic things are there, like sail ties, but they do a brilliant job. Um, or any other online retailer, or not online. Um, yeah, so that's it. Um, what have I missed? Pull the system. The pulley system. Oh, okay, I've missed the pulley system. Yeah. So um, yeah, we didn't have to, in the end, we didn't have to use this very much. Um, but yeah, so with the anchor, or just tied onto a tree or something. Um, we put uh, yeah, hook this onto the bow of the boat. Hook the other end onto a tree, or 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 with the anchor jammed into the beach or the dune, and then. And it's tied. Um, wake it up. Wake it up, and then put it through. And um, that's basically how it works. And you can pull the boat all the way up to the top of the anchor line to get it uh, up quite a steep incline like that. Um, but again, most most of the time we didn't have to use that, and just 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 on the rollers and manually pulling was sufficient. But yeah. We were kind of we could we we were pretty confident of getting up basically any beach with, with the the uh, the rollers and and this system as well. Yeah.
So that's it. Um, just, yeah, a few little puzzles that are solved, and that meant that, yeah, you could take a 2K round, round one and be the beginner, <laughs> ex-beginner. <laughs>